Tonight's episode of Green Arrow Podcast is brought to you by Golden Spins. Welcome, everybody. How's everyone doing tonight? Tonight's episode of Green Arrow Podcast, we are talking about the music, the albums that changed us in some way. Some album, we all have one, everyone in this world has one, where you put it on and you know everything everything about it you know every lyric you know where you were when you first heard that album you know what it means you know everything and it's a part of who you are we all got them i got one my crew has one and tonight we're talking about them right here on green arrow podcast Welcome, everybody, out there in podcast land. I am Anthony. This is Green Arrow Podcast. And tonight, like I said in the teaser, we're talking about all of the albums that are very, very special to us. We are talking about the albums that made us who we are or changed our lives in some way. And tonight's podcast, I got the crew with me. I got Teresa Beans. Say hello, Teresa. Yo, yo, yo. I got Izzy on the mic. Isaiah, what's going on? What it do, boo? Tonight, I have Amanda to my right. How's it going, sis? It is going great. How are you? Uh, I'm doing good. And you know what? A real side thing before we start, I noticed something, that we all have a nickname that starts with the letter B, and I think that's really cool. What's mine? Bitch. Bitch. <laughs> Beer, bitch, bun, what's and yours, beans. Then? That is definitely beard. mine. Beard. Beard, the beard, bitch, bun, and beans. Yeah, the, and the block. And the block. And That's the right. Block. There's five of us. Josh is not on the this episode beans. tonight. Why does it got to be hardcore for me, though, bitch? Because, because you're oh, a bitch. Oh, or big I, nose. I didn't know no, that. It doesn't, no, that doesn't work. You're you, still, you're a bitch. You're the bitch. Right. I never call you by should your nickname. Seen you, it's just, everybody should have seen you at that hotel Excuse me, you never call me by what? I never call you by your nickname. I didn't even know that was your nickname. So. Her nickname's You call bitch. me big nose or bird. True. <laughs> the beans, the bun, the beard, the bitch, and the block. That's that's that is Green Arrow podcast. They even so, control of herself. Thank I you. know. So tonight we are talking about all of the albums, like I said in the tease in the beginning, that make us who we are. Special albums. Do you know where you were when you first heard it? You were excited when you heard when it was coming out. You were there at the concert, and you just loved the the album. And I have one. I have several. I know Teresa has several. We all have mm-hmm. several. And I want to know what those are. So normally I kick it right over to Teresa first. I'm not going to do that tonight. All right. I'll go fuck myself. <laughs> You're always the first one, Beans. That's because I like talking and getting my shit out of the way. That's true. But but no. Amanda, I'm going to kick it off with you first. All right. Give me an album <laughs> that changed your life wait so are we doing it one at a time or all of them at once one at a time gives us That's time fine. to breathe in room so an album that definitely changed my life would be post malone's hollywood's bleeding album which came out in 2019 shout out to post malone um that album definitely changed me because uh he just he just speaks for my heartbreak you know if you really listen to it there's a ton of tracks on there that, especially, oh God, what is the name of that one song? Here you go. Um, well, we have the Google machine right here. Yeah, I know. I just had it in front of me, and I lost my, I lost my train no of thought. Music, no, no, can't no, no. Either. Can't play any of the music. <laughs> Don't play the music. But we can talk about it. We're not trying to get canceled. No, no, no. See that cancel culture? That's coming up in a very future podcast. <laughs> no, no, we will um, not get canceled. So the songs that I had on for this album is A Thousand Bad Times is mm-hmm. the the one song on this this track, I mean on this album that really speaks for me because no matter what in my personal life that I'm going through because I'm an idiot, I True take that. people back. I take people back all the time and I put myself through shit a thousand bad times. So the song really speaks to him um, really saying that, you know, no matter what, 
you can kill me. You could do whatever you want to me, but I'm going to come back. I will take you back and I'm going to go through it a thousand bad times because that just speaks to no matter what you as crazy as it sounds, you care for that person so much that you're just going to go back and take them no matter what. So that's that was one song that really spoke to me in 2019. Another one on there for me would be, um, well, a couple of them, Staring at the Sun and Sunflower. Uh, great tracks. Aww. Staring at the Sun is just a beautiful song, you know. Now, is the song you did with Ozzy on this album? What's yes, the name of that yes song? it is. The, um, uh, uh, he did that is take what you want mm -hmm. that's on here okay that's the only post Malone song that I actually know and that's also the only one I like but I'm sorry to interrupt you I was just I needed to know that no that is a, a great <laughs> scared the shit um, out of me that is a great song take what you want uh, hold on let me just get the lyrics because there was one part of the song are we allowed to say lyrics you I don't can think so no no you can say lyrics yeah, yeah, just don't, just say don't the, sing it yeah don't <laughs> sing it and don't say the whole lyric so, don't go with the flow like, don't, <laughs> don't finish rap it yeah don't so, finish so it I, so I could speak it I just can't rap it I don't want to get cited here yeah, don't, yeah, just, I'll stop you when I think you're doing something stupid don't start making the beat on the table <laughs> <laughs> so take what you want is another great song because something I went through um, obviously with my ex, this spoke to me, this, this, tr this po portion that Post Malone said, he said, I never needed anything from you. All I ever asked was for the truth. You showed your tongue and it was forked in two. Your venom was lethal. I almost believed you. You prayed on my every mistake, waited on me to break, held me under hoping I would drown like a plague. I was wasting away, trying to find my way out, find my way out. That spoke to basically my whole relationship with him and my second situationship that I have going on now. So this song, Post Malone, just this whole album speaks to me because I feel like he goes through what I go through because he's a teddy bear. He loves, he gives himself to, you know, to who he's with. He gives his all and he just doesn't get anything back. Mm. So Hollywood's Bleeding, great friggin' album. Um, but one song that also is not on this album, it's all it's on his other album, Beer Bongs and Bentley. Don't know what year it came out, but it's called Over Now. Um, this song is just basically, you know, another great one because it's over now. And he just speaks to the relationship and, you know, no discussion. We got to go our separate ways. It's over. And that's just what my life is. Mm. Every time I get into a relationship, it's just over. Mm. Oh, so, that's fucking sad. Yeah, like <laughs> I don't want this to be turned. I don't want this to be a therapy session. But thank aw. you, Amanda, for that. Thanks for sharing. You know, we need something. <laughs> Does anyone have an album that's really poppy that they want to talk about? I mean, who doesn't love Post Malone? I saw him in concert last year. He was fucking. Amazing. I actually, I, I, I concur with Amanda. I, I really do like Post Malone. And when she went last year, she went in February before the pandemic hit, and I was like, "Fuck no, I'm not going to see Post Malone with you." I even invited Izzy, um, and he didn't want to go. He's and like, nah. And I remember that conversation because he was like, the only Post Malone song I know is White Aversion. And I was like, I don't know any Post Malone song. Not White, White Aversion. White, it's White, White Iverson. White what? <laughs> I was close. White anyway, I no, you wasn't. No, shut you the wasn't. fuck up. Anyway, White whatever. Aversion. I was, whatever. I was, whatever. So, um, but I do like Post Malone now because of Amanda. So. And it's because I shut play up. it almost every day in the car. That's also I, true. I not and it actually fan. reminds me <laughs> of driving to work with you in the morning before the pandemic. Because around that time, that's all you would play. And now when I hear anything off that album, I can think of like driving in the car with you. And it's sad because our lives have changed so drastically since then. It's sad driving with me in a car? No, yes. I'm talking about <laughs> like, the pandemic, the car. deaths. It's kind of, it's just different. But that's... This shit bliss. I'm so it rich. Is you can't sing it. Oh, sorry. I'm not a fan of Post Malone. She wasn't singing Post Malone. <laughs> I'm not a fan of Post Malone, per se. You know, I like I liked his track with Ozzy. I like him more as, like, a social media character. I think he's goofy as fuck, and I like him. Oh, my I, God, his Super Bowl commercial yeah, was like, hysterical. I just can't get... I like Every time I see him, I can smell wet garbage. No, why does everybody say that about him? <laughs> because he looked crusty and... Post Malone, you are adorable to me. Okay, like, his pop figure is cuter than he is. He should have kept his hair... I don't know anything about that. Izzy, what do you got? Give me an album that spoke to you on a spiritual level. On a spiritual level, maybe no. <laughs> I don't have a whole album that kind of speaks to me. Sure. Just like I pick songs and my playlists have a lot of uh, a lot of selections, but so not like, like a create, one. Create your own like 
Fuck yeah. 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 I can't listen to one thing. Like, I could listen to rock. I could listen to just ask Teresa on the way to fucking PA. We listen to fucking everything. Rock, Jamaican, hip hop, all types of shit. AC Freestyle DC music. Pop, is a big thing AC for him right DC. now. AC, Akadaka? Akadaka. Akadaka. Alternated current, direct current. <laughs> <laughs> I can listen to them. That's that contractor shit. Yes, sir. <laughs> I can listen to them. I can listen to everything, but I just can't listen to one person and then whole album and like it, 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 uh, nah not for me so what do you got then so a kind of childhood from my mom my dad when they were thugs back in the day Aww. they um they listened to Biggie a lot so the Ready to Die remastered Notorious B.I.G. Why well, I could stuff. see your mom like totally bopping to that oh hell yeah she'll listen to Biggie any day you know like <laughs> so a lot of tracks from that really speak to me but it just reminds me of my childhood, you know, like the way my parents grew up, um, the way my mom grew up, my dad grew up. They didn't come from a nice neighborhood or anything like that. And this, that's just kind of what they know is related to those tracks that Biggie got. He was a great storyteller. You know, he could put together a nice track really good. But he had that flow, you know, like to oh, keep absolutely. the story going. Like the warning, like he was talking about. What was it warning? I think it was. Yeah, warning where he was talking about people breaking into his house. And while doing the track, he's on the phone to somebody giving him a warning. Yes. Like, hey, look, you know, I was at a dice game and people are coming to, the, you know, stick you up. They want to take your money. Yeah, he did that yeah. again with Suicidal Thoughts. Where Suicidal he's on Thoughts the phone. where he called, I think it was Biggie. Um, uh, Puff. Puff. He called Puff. And he was like, you know, like, I'm getting real sick and tired of this shit, da, da, da. Like, you know, bitches don't love me. They only love me for my money. I might as well just kill myself, you know? Like, yep. And at the end, it has the gunshot and then him dropping the phone. And it's all audio, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and warning was like, you know, the way he goes off of the track is like, hold on, I think I hear somebody coming. And then you hear the gunshots and shit like that, like, of him shooting the people that's trying to break into his house. Another one like that was... um. Um, give me the loot where he's talking about somebody that just got out of jail and now they're going back into the street business, um, robbing people, sticking people up, talking about grabbing guns, get a bulletproof vest, um, the cops rolling up, trying to duck them. And that song basically ends. Um, the cops find them, pull them over. They say to each other, well, I ain't trying to go back to jail. Because his friend just got out. So he was like, I'm not trying to go back to jail. So then it ends in a shootout with him shooting at the cops and his friend shooting at the cops. And then the track ends. Yeah. So that Notorious Ready to Die, all those tracks. All those. You know what uh, What do you call it? One, it wasn't one guy. Because, you know, there were several producers who did Ready to Die. Yeah. You know, Easy Moby did both of um Give me the loot and warning. Right, right, right. You had the Blues Brothers. You had Puffy. You had uh, uh, Chucky Thompson. There was a, like DJ Premier. I think did one as well. You know, there's a lot of people on that album who who just like helped Biggie so much yeah. make that that, yeah. that sound like his sound. But the man had a flow that's like telling a story was like Biggie's gift to the world. I used to read Word Up magazine. Word, Dude, Biggie yeah. had tracks like that where he could make it for to play on the radio for mainstream music, but he also did tracks that he wanted to do, you know, like yep. suicidal thoughts, warning and shit like that. Like you know, he, he wanted to put his spin on it. For for a guy who only has two albums, like legit albums when he's like when he said to like two legit studio albums, Ready to Die, Life After Death, he made an impact on the game. Of the rap game, unlike anyone else with that short amount of stuff, like yeah. Tupac is just up there with Biggie, in my opinion. I would prefer Biggie, but you know no, that's a whole you. different. No, I absolutely, sure. but like Pac, Biggie, Eminem, to me are like the holy trinity of rap. Uh, of course, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Everyone, in some way, shape, or form, except for those who obviously predate them, yeah. like put their roots in one of those three. Yeah. Right, but they all pay homage. Exactly, to one but, of the three. But you know? Tupac like lived in the studio. It's like you, he, like he's got albums coming out twenty years after he's dead. Biggie was like, "Yo, here's two albums, forty tracks or something like that, and yeah, maybe a, a compilation, a yeah. remix album down the line. Yeah, yeah. Nothing else. You know, Biggie's dead. Pac is still a question mark. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But when Biggie's just like he got those tracks where you could, you know, put on a pair of headphones 
and close your eyes and you could watch it play in your thoughts. Yes. You know, like you could, you could see it. You could see him hustling on the block. You could see him in that shootout he's talking about. You could see him driving down the car looking for, you know, um, people that's looking for him or anything like that. Like you could see it all. Everything he speaks, you could see it in your head. It's sad. I never really got into him like that. Oh, he's amazing. And mind you, we didn't even talk about like the two biggest tracks arguably off a of ready to die are, are juicy and big papa yeah, yeah, yeah you know what i mean like yeah. those were his big juicy yeah. big hits like radio hits no yeah those were his like mainstream hits but yeah. i'm sorry you had them tracks like warning where you could you could play warning and you could close your eyes and you could see him getting up picking up the phone his big black ass walking around his <laughs> fucking boxers in his bedroom talking about oh nah they ready to kill me they could come da, da, da. like you could see it happening like yes it's crazy and it's i don't know he's just the a man, legend for that shit, yes you know? he was the definitely. man was a gift from the gods so rap gods definitely he's up there yep for sure. okay beans let me get let me hear something that you got um so my first i think in in my opinion, I mean, obviously, it's my opinion. Um, my first album I have is called Vices and Virtues, and it's by Panic the Disco. Oh, I was going to say, she's got to um, choose Panic. <laughs> Panic at the Disco has been my favorite band since I was 10 or 11. Um, Brendan Urie's like the most important, one of the most important artists, in my opinion. You know, not even just Panic at the Disco, but Brendan Urie as a person. But Vices and Virtues um, really hits home for, not hits home for me, but growing up listening to it it came out in 2011 so i kind of i've been with the album since it came out um and it a lot of it is a lot of it is about love and one of the songs that really stuck out to me was i lost it hold on um was memories and memories goes over basically a couple's love life and the the foundation and to their crumble, basically. Right. Um, and one of the lyrics was, or one of the one of the choruses, or whatever the fuck you want to call it, when money when money lost momentum and the bills were piling high, then the smile had finally faded from the apple of their eye, and they were young and independent, and they thought they had it planned. Should have known right from the start, you can't predict the end. And it's almost like a it's like an early Bon Jovi like it's, it's same message. Yeah, like and and a lot of the songs off of this album are the same. Um, the probably two one actually of the most noted tracks off of this album is the Ballad of Mona Lisa. Mm -hmm. um, this song this album really didn't have a lot of like huge hits like Nine in the Afternoon or Saturday Night or anything like that. But it's definitely one of um, my favorite albums of all time, and I actually want the the title of the album tattooed on my arm. Um, I love it that much. It's probably, like I said, my favorite album from Panic at the Disco. I don't give a fuck what, what else they come out with mm -hmm. because it's just this one for me. And I think it's also because when I started getting into Panic at the Disco, it was released when I was just getting like attached to the band. Yeah. So I've been with it since forever. And, you know, it's just a really great fucking album. Um, so I recommend all of you to listen to it because even if you're not a white people music fan, it's still a really what good. What was the the album we went to see his concert went on? Um, Wasn't that Death of the Bachelor? Yes, that is a great album. Yes. Death of the Bachelor I, is also a great. I'm album. not a fan of 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 uh, Panic at the Disco, but I thought Death of the Bachelor is a fantastic album. So I just want to sing right now, and I can't. And uh, <laughs> Brandon Yuri and I have a special little connection. Not a real connection, but like him and I are both born the Why same did you day. Send me that? Uh, which I think is cool. We're both oh. born on April 12th. I think he's like two years older than me or something like he that. He was born in 87. Oh, one year old. One year old. Yeah. A great song off is of he, there. Um, is he... Uh, oh, what is that song? Well, I also love what? That song that... Oh, House of Memories? No, not Hallelujah. The one where he was on the piano? Yes, the one where he floated on the piano. It's a um, great song. Uh, do, 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 do. What is he? Well, like, What's his ethnicity? I don't know exactly what he is, but I know um, he was brought up. I mean, this isn't ethnic ethnicity; it's religion. He was brought up Mormon in Interesting. Nevada. Interesting. And his whole band, which is why um, Death of a Bachelor is very, you, it's Ellie devotee. A lot of it has to do with Mohan Drive. He was a very he was he grew up in California, Nevada. So he's. Um, you know, he comes from a Mormon background and he basically told his parents, fuck you, I'm not growing up like that. Okay. Um, I only ask because he missed a very good opportunity to name his band something else, else if he was actually Spanish. 
No, he's not Spanish. Yeah, if he was, he could have called a Hispanic at the disco. I hate you. Oh <laughs> my god! But um, I found a- shout out Panic at the Disco. You, I grew up with you guys, and you're my favorite band ever. I found a funny little thing, Teresa. Mm-hmm. I thought you were like, it was basically Mad Libs. It was like things that I write, sins, things that I don't write, tragedy, <laughs> things people haven't heard of, closing the goddamn door, <laughs> things the bride is a whore. Oh, he is of Polynesian descent. Oh wow, that's awesome. He is the fifth and youngest child born to Grace and Boyd Yuri, blah, blah blah. He is one of he is about he is of about one quarter Polynesian descent from Hawaii through his mother's side. What is the name of this song? I don't know. Okay, let me go. Let me take one because then we gotta take a very small uh commercial break. Um the first album that's on my list um is very special to me because it's the it's the very first album I was ever given. Like I was 10 years old, and mom and dad were like, you know what? You can listen to music now. Like, I guess I just listened to whatever before. And they were like, we're giving you this for Christmas. And on the C- it was a CD of Kiss Destroyer, mm-hmm. which came out in 1976, right? And I fell in love with the band Kiss because of that. Like, it was the first time in my life where I was like, I had a musical kind of like identity. And like every song on this album, to me, was the greatest thing ever written at the time. Now, you know, I'm 33 years old, about to be 33 years old now. And looking back, is this one of the best albums ever? No, no. <laughs> not even near. Like Great Expectations isn't that good of a song. Uh, Sweet Pain's not even a good song. But the remainder of this album, mind you, there's 10 tracks to me are just some of the best things ever. First of all, you have Detroit Rock City, which kicks off Kiss Con- has kicked off Kiss mm-hmm. concerts thousands of times. It's an amazing amazing song and it just it is hard, it's heavy and it's amazing. And it's the first time I, I ever thought of like creative writing because like one of the lines at the very end is I have to laugh cuz I know I'm going to die and then you hear a car crash. So for me it was like, wow, they killed off the main character of the song. Like that's heavy shit for a 10-year-old. So like that then that's the first track, right? King of the Nighttime World is another. That's a great song. It is a good song. And what's cool about that was I had a writing assignment in fifth grade. And like she was like, literally, just describe yourself. And one girl was like, I'm blonde, blue eyed, I wear glasses. And she's like, that's what you what I that's what like the teacher wanted. I was like, I'm king of the nighttime world. I stalk the shadows. I I like came up with a superhero thing. And she's that's like, that's why Yo. everyone thought you needed therapy. Yes, and like the teacher was <laughs> like, you failed because this is not what I wanted. I just Whoa. wanted to know what color eyes you had. Exactly, and then I like God of Thunder, right? Amazing song, heavy as all hell, uh, mythological. Shout it out loud's a great party song. And then out of nowhere, Kiss hits you with Beth, which is something that they almost didn't even make the album. They thought it was going to be a shit track. No one wants to hear Peter Chris sing. He's the mm-hmm. drummer. It's a slow piano. Just we're not putting this on the album. And they were like, no, nah, just fuck it. Put it on the album. it's one of the most infamous Kiss songs ever. It is one of the biggest songs on the planet. I and they still think that their songs are better without makeup on. That's debatable. Like lick it up and all those. You know, maybe we do that as a future podcast. Which my favorite Kiss, Kiss song is, is uh, "Let's Put the X in Sex." That's I love a, that fucking song. song. You know, and then they wrap it up with "Do You Love Me," another great song. Yeah. You know, and then the, they actually end the album with an instrumental, which I actually never listened to. It's called "Rock and Roll Party," because to me, it's like I'm not in the mood for instrumentals, so I just kind of skip them. And I actually listened to this uh, album again two weeks ago or a week and a half ago, something like that. Kiss Unplugged. Great and, album. Uh, it is a I good agree. Album. But I listened to this album again, and I was like, the album is still like it brings back so many memories of when I was ten, and like how I discovered everything mm-hmm. else about Kiss, which also was the year Psycho Circus was released, ninety eight, and that was another album that I fucking love, and I like I bookended like one of their earliest releases and their last release at the time, and how like. Like to me, that was just awesome to have those two albums. But I chose Destroyer because it was the first one I remember. Okay, before we go on to round two of what our what music has changed us and made us, we're gonna take a quick commercial break. Brought to you by our sponsor. We'll be right back. Stick with us. Are you looking for a vinyl LP or cassette tape, forty-five RPM? If so, you've come to the right place. Golden Spins. 
We have thousands of titles in stock and ready to ship. Call us at 862-336-2275 or go to our store at discogs.com backslash seller backslash golden spins backslash profile. We can find whatever you may need. We proudly accept PayPal and every major credit card. And we are back right here on Green Arrow Podcast. And we're in, thank you for uh, coming back and listening to us. We are talking about our greatest albums to us, uh, the albums that changed us and made us or just stick out in our memories for whatever reason, shape, or form. On our first round, we had Panic at the Disco. We had Kiss, Biggie, Smalls, and Post Malone, which I think that's a nice little mix between the four of them, right? Yes, sir. So let's go again. Round two. Can we Let's, start differently? Yes, we can start differently. Beans, what do you got for us this time? <laughs> hey, um, <laughs> one of one of uh, my favorite albums of all time reminds me of my mother um, and Seaside. Well, actually not Seaside, but just going down the shore in general, uh, mainly Red Bank kind of in the aug- end of August, September. And it is Lost Highway by Bon Jovi. Um, really? Every time I listen to Lost Highway, I can close my eyes and I am sitting in the back of the white caravan driving through Red Bank with the leaves changing um, and just listening to this with mom and dad. And it's really sentimental to me because of my parents, um, because I think it's one of mom's favorite um, albums by Bon Jovi as well. Mm-hmm. But... It's just I, I hold this album very near and dear to my heart, and uh, so that's one of mine. I don't know if it shaped me in any way, but when I ever, whenever I turn it on, it just brings me back to a place that I love being. So that would be mine. I don't really have much else to say other than that about it. I mean, that's I, the only reason I kind of think that's a little odd is because Lost Highway is definitely more country, and Red Bank is not country. You know, no, what I, mean? I like, know, I know. It's just that. It just it doesn't remind me of country. It just reminds me of a right. special place. And I think um, the song that really brings me to that I don't know that that place would be um, you want to make a memory. I just think of that song and I'm like I'm Great I'm track. either down the shore or I'm with my parents Which or I just still driving don't somewhere. Know what that song is about? We want to make a memory. It's if you watch the lyric, if you watch the sex? video, it no. just doesn't make sense to me. Okay, you're 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 misinterpreting two things right you have the song itself mm-hmm. and then you have the music video about the song you a have music, to separate it uh, yeah a music video doesn't necessarily i mean it helps but a music video doesn't necessarily need to make sense with the lyrics you know there's thousands of different uh types of music videos you can do and they did a, some sort of story with it and i guess it's left that way to be open for interpretation but like the song itself is pretty self-explanatory. It's yeah. like stay with me but and let's create something new. My right. my favorite track off of the album is "Till We Ain't Strangers Anymore," um, with Great Leanne track. Rhymes. And the reason being is again, it reminds me of mom and dad because mom and dad have gone through some pretty rough patches um, over their marriage thirty fucking thirty four years. You wouldn't you would imagine they would. Um, and I think the lyric that kind of describes them both is sometimes it's hard to love me. Sometimes it's hard to love you, too. I know it's hard believing that love can pull us through because um, sometimes they really just get to that place where it's like I just, you know, they sometimes just feel like they can't do it anymore. But they got to believe in what they have and it gets them. It gets them better again. So that's mine. That's a great. Absolutely a great track. Like. Like it's mm-hmm. weird. I have a love hate relationship with Bon Jovi because there are some albums where I'm like, like, shut the fuck up. <laughs> well, besides that, there are some albums where I'm like, every track slaps, and then mm-hmm. I'm like, there are other albums where I'm like, I want to slap every track. Like, <laughs> did, did, yeah. did Dead or Alive was it him? That's Bon, yeah, Jovi. That's bon Jovi. But yeah, that's, this- that's, that's the first thing I think about when I hear his name. Dead Dead or or alive. Yeah, but definitely Lost <laughs> Highway. I know every track off of this um, album. That's a good and one. Yeah. Summertime is actually a staple song in yep. this house during the summer. It's constantly played. Joey has it on a loop. So I kind of put it with the summertime. But it also goes through like it starts with the summer, but you end in the fall. 
and that's yeah. what I like about it because you listen to the, you listen to the beginning tracks, summertime, lost highway. Okay, we're on vacation. We're going down the shore. We're having fun. It's summer, but then you get to till we ain't strangers anymore. The last night, everybody's broken, and that's more like the seasons changing. It's more melancholy, and I like that about the album. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's a. I would say that's a, lost highway is probably one for me. Bounce is definitely another one for yeah. me. Where I'm just I love it. You know, and then there's, I can pick and choose the rest of it. And then there's Bon Jovi 2020, and it's like, what the fuck are you doing? Take you and your white hair and stop <laughs> singing through your nose. And Shout feed. out Bon Jovi. Yeah, I mean, the, you can't, you, I can't say a nasty thing about Jersey him. Jersey staple. Yeah, like the man literally rolls up his sleeves and goes to his soup kitchen that he started and pays for mm -hmm. to feed homeless people and people down their luck. Like, That's dope. The, yeah, like he should be it's like. It's called the Soul Kitchen in Red Bank. Yeah, That's like dope. the man is like what every rocker icon should be. Mm -hmm. And the what and well, here's what I love the most. It's like he doesn't generate the buzz from doing that because he yeah. wants the buzz. No, He's I never doing, heard about that until you said Exactly. It. Like yeah. you wouldn't even know he does that. Like you might hear like, oh, they started this thing but they don't actually contribute just their name on the building type yeah, shit. Yeah. No, he's there like all yep. the time. And Fucking he also has a wine company called Hampton Water. Yes. Like and he so came out with Jose. a pasta sauce too. It's Bon Jovi pasta sauce. Bon Jovi pasta sauce. It's his sauce. father's, I think, his yes. father's recipe that he started selling. You know his name is not Bon Jovi, it's Bon Giovi. Yes. yes, Amanda, thank you. Just wanted to, fun like, fact. You know, like, Bon Giovi. Take someone like <laughs> Kylie Jenner. Like this is, no, I don't know. thank you. Hold on. This, I don't know how true this is, but I read it the other day, so I'm just taking it at face value. Stormy. But like, I think her makeup artist got into a car accident. Oh, we got another listener. Hold on. Who? Andy. Hi, okay. Andy. Shout out, Andy. Hello. Shout out, Andy Sosa. Shout Hello, out Andy. Andy. Anyway, Kylie Jenner's, I think, makeup artist or makeup person got into a car accident and got fucked up brain damage, and they had to do surgery. So she is a billionaire with a B. Mm. And she started a GoFundMe for her makeup artist and donated five thousand dollars. Don't do that. <laughs> it's like Kylie. Bitch, Yo. buy the hospital. <laughs> for real. Like, just buy that room she's she staying in. Like. She could be on the board. Like, what the fuck? Yo, and then you have Bon crazy. Jovi, who's ladling soup, who's mm -hmm. a millionaire, and he's like, yeah. Jumpsuit Jimmy needs some soup. I'm going to give him and some And it's soup. actually pretty funny because <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if we brought you down there yet, but in Red Bank, you have like the really, really nice Shout area. Shout out Jumpsuit Jimmy. Yeah, <laughs> you I always have, see him on that fucking chair. Yeah. You have the really, really nice area, and then you literally have railroad tracks, and right across the railroad tracks is like the ghetto of Red Bank, and Bon Jovi's Soul Kitchen is right at the beginning of that area yeah so and you go there like he doesn't ask you to buy food it's either you can contribute what you can as a donation or you can help or out you in can the kitchen help clean out yeah like and that's you, it you go in and eat and it's not like there's no like oh, so oh, you don't have to be like a bum to eat exactly like no. if you're just down on your luck and you need a meal and you happen to be in red bank or you just feel like be doing something nice for someone you, yeah you can literally stop in They'll bring you a menu. This is like it's not like a five oh, star restaurant. a menu. Yeah, but it's, it's like a restaurant. Yeah, you but get it's to like eat, there's but... like three. Like they keep it minimal. It's like we have five soups. We have these appetizers. It's not like you have a dinery of a billion choices. Wow. But like it's it's good enough. And then you pick something, and they bring you your food, and you eat. And as payment. You can donate your time helping in the kitchen doing something. And this has been like amazing and popular. Mm -hmm. And I think he just opened a second one either in Philly or yeah. or lost. It's probably Philadelphia because yeah. he's in Philly a lot. But a I think it's Part of me also great. wants to say NOLA, but I don't know. If the, I, I don't, don't know. think so. That's I think it's great because it's not so like with restaurants, they, they stay open based off of their, their revenue and what exactly. they bring in. Yeah, that's what he's I'm putting say. money into this and keeping it running off of his own, like, there's his own financial. Yeah, like, uh, there's probably no profit like he's probably not making yeah no like money just, off of it i mean he's pumping he's a, money a into gazillionaire it. anyway but it's nice to give back to the community so, so i was so i'm not so i'm not right uh i was wrong it's a, he's actually got one in red bank and another one in newark at the oh, really? rutgers that's newark dope. dining jbj soul kitchen that's so okay. cool well, that's we're new. down i want to go yeah. yo yeah but every time we go to Red Bank now, my mom makes us makes my father drive past to see if he's there. I'll wash he's the there. fuck out of he them goes dishes. In there. <laughs> All the like, Yo, put me in the back. In I'm about to wash everything, fam. And there's one in Tom's River. Mm -hmm. So he's got three. 
I mean, I'm reading off of his Instagram. He's, so I definitely, I definitely look up to Bon Jovi, and I think I always will, based on yes. my upbringing, because mom really is like in love with everything about him. Um, and it's not only that; I also formed my own opinion and my own love for him. Yep. Um, so shout out Bon Jovi, because you're a pretty awesome dude. Just enough with the singing, because. Let's not. Not anymore. All right. well, we don't want to turn this <laughs> into a because we, we could turn Love this you, into Jovi. A, we could turn this into a Bon Jovi podcast, but that's not what we're here about. Okay. Um, uh, Izzy, give me another album that or, or a bunch of um, tracks from an artist that you find special. Let's see. Um, I'm gonna go with Lil Wayne this time. Oh no. Um, we we gonna fight. <laughs> no. Nah, well, shout out though, Lil Wayne. Yeah, everybody's gonna say you know Lil Wayne. He started the mumbo rap shit and stuff like that. He probably did. You know, he, he did. He, he contributed to it, but it was like he started it. You know, he created it. And <laughs> Lollipop you gotta give is him respect. Song. Whoa. <laughs> 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 you gotta give him respect. He started a whole new era. You know, like he really has people that really just copy his whole shit, but. He knows that that's he's true. A, yes, I will yeah, be, like he yeah. knows he's the man. Like he definitely could pull his rank, but he doesn't. He's kind of like one of those low key guys now. But um, the album that really speaks to me, which I would say the Carter Three, but oh, that was like dog shit. Everyone had that album. Yeah, it was everywhere. Yeah, but everybody had you know everybody. I like. I am not III. a human being. What well, is a good album? <laughs> That is a good album. The Gonorrhea. Car- <laughs> Great not, song. Nah, I, I wouldn't pick the Carter 3. The Carter 3 is like not really my time. So if anything, the Carter 4, you know, it's hearing my brothers play that shit nonstop. Well, yeah, you would have been 10 years old Word. when the Carter 3 <laughs> dropped. I didn't know what music was. I was just <laughs> like, whatever. Like hearing them play that shit nonstop. Mega Man, six foot, seven foot, blunt blowing. It was just like listening to that shit. I thought he was amazing you know especially at that age so little wayne is something that you know if i hear him you know kind of takes me back to that time so that's crazy that he's saying little wayne brings him back to his childhood because what brings me back to my childhood and hearing the same song everywhere during that summer anthony can you do you, do you remember it which one that one song that was played constantly during oh, the summer. So which summer? Was it a Lil That's Wayne song? very, very, we, very big. I know, it's very big. Not Lil Wayne, but it's during when me and Anthony were growing up. So I guess maybe 10 years late, earlier or whatever. So you're talking about when we were 10 years old? Yeah. Well, maybe a little older than that. Uh, 50 Cent. 50 Cent. Oh, 50 you're, t- cent. Oh, you're talking about that t- one song that you, well, played constantly. Everybody well, has like 12 of them. Yeah, like seriously, though. No. Like 2002 to 2004, little uh, so 50 Cent was there. You're talking about Wangsta. You're talking about In the Club. Wangsta. You're Wangsta. Talking about- Wangsta. Wangsta was the one. You're talking Wangsta. about. Uh, <laughs> um, um, Oh my God, Get Rich or Die, die Trying. Yeah, yeah, Get Rich or Die Trying was. Wangsta was the one because I can remember coming home from school, St. Gerard's. And I can remember, or maybe this was even when I was a freshman in high school, and just coming home and being outside. We used to play outside in the front after school. Yes. If you yeah. remember that, we used to play outside in the front. You could just hear the cars coming down the street, the sidewalks, like every other car was this song, Wangsta. And I'm yep. just like, Jesus Christ. 50 blew up that- 2003, maybe it was? No, yeah, it was 2003. I mean, but the thing, like, to say like Wangsta was everywhere, well, yeah, so was P.I.M.P. It was. That, P-I-M-P. that one 21 too. Questions. 20 21 in questions. The Great oh, album. Shit. If I can't, many men like Back the, Down was on that too. Back Down, like the the album was. I mean, amazing. 50, 50. This is. I mean, I know I'm next, but this is not an album that obviously has changed my life. But this album, like Teresa says, Bon Jovi brings her back sure. to a certain point. Yeah. Get Rich or Die Trying definitely brings me back to a point when we used to hang out with Pamela and yep. Carlos next door, yep, yep, yep. hanging outside. Yeah, yeah. This album played all the time. Yeah, this definitely, I agree with you 100%. This is definitely on my albums I know front. Like, this should be on my list. I'm not going to bring this up tonight to talk about. It wasn't one I was prepared for. I considered it, though, because of the impact yeah it you know I, it had on me growing right. up uh, 50 cent was those people that you could play on the radio like he had those tracks sure. where it's like you know like this is a bop you know i'll play this on the radio <laughs> and people are gonna you know everybody will listen to it you know your mother and the daughter everybody but yeah little wayne was kind of one of those people you had to look for you know but the carter four had you know those tracks like i mentioned but little wayne is just one of those people where he had the punchlines like the punchlines was it for me like he either could come up with a dumb punchline 
like real G's move in silence like lasagna. That was great. Who a, like <laughs> who great. comes up with it? You know, like at least you know what he's talking about. Okay, the G is silent in lasagna, and real gangsters move in silence. Okay, but those are I some of those those lyrics you sit back and you're like, you have to think about it. Like you have what to re-listen to it mean? again. Like yeah. Yeah. oh shit, that's like, what he meant. <laughs> like yo, he just talked about lasagna. Like he's over here talking about real G's, and he just mentioned lasagna. You put it together, it's like okay. Like he had those ones you could talk about. But he had the real meaningful ones, like the Carter Five for me was kind of like a more like a storytelling one. But like in that one, like he talks about like, um, man, there was one part of the song where he's like, um, oh, my mother told me not to speak to tr- uh, not to speak to strangers, so I don't talk to the man in the mirror. So he's basically looking at himself like I'm a stranger to myself, like I can't even speak to myself. It's an interesting yeah. way of looking at like yeah. So you make you think like, damn, he doesn't even you know he doesn't oh, trust himself. You know he doesn't know who he is. And him having all that money and shit like that makes you think, like, where his head is at. So, yeah. I mean, I, I can't say I'm a fan of Lil Wayne. Like, I, I've heard, you know, the, the obviously the singles, I've listened to them. And there's, they did two tracks with Eminem, which both of them I really like. Yeah. But uh, there is one interview he did. Someone asked him about racism in America. And he talked about, like, he was 13 and he was shot and killed. Yeah, and yeah, a yeah, yeah. police officer brought him to like a white man. Yeah, a white police officer brought him to the Los Angeles. I'm sorry, to the hospital in uh, Louisiana. And um, he's. I think I'm quoting him when I say like he said. Um, I don't know racism, but I know you know I know I have an uncle Bob though because yeah. like he checked him into the hospital like I'm his uncle. Yeah, you know, like, like he'll answer with a story. Yeah, you know, like, like I like his view on life. I'm just yeah. not a fan of his music. And he knows, like he knows who he is. Like he's a very humble guy. Like, but he knows when he has to pull the rank, like he will. You know, like even in his punchlines, you know, is like you know the game is a bitch, but I got my hand up her dress. So he secretly, <laughs> you know, like he secretly knows that he's in control of the rap game like he could pull rank if he wants to i mean he's the ceo of his own label you got to be able to do that you know young money entertainment if he's running if he's not running that yeah. anyone can do anything and the man's not even 40 years old on top of very old exactly so he's got a lot under his belt and i know he's had one hell of a life he's ugly as fuck but <laughs> I, I used mean, to think at one point he was so good looking i had a wayne of course you did i had a little wayne poster he in my leather, day. leather poster, so soft that. he was sexy back in the day but now he's no, yeah, I don't know what happened to him now. <laughs> he looks like you can find him in the bottom of the trash can, just hanging out. Okay, well, I'll go next. Um, and this album, this album was a, a, a work in progress for me because I did something with it about a decade after it came out. And this is My Chemical Romance's The Black Parade album. And it was when this album came out, I was like, all right, I wasn't a big fan of My Chemical Romance. I didn't like, I liked the song Helena. And the uh, the Ghost of You, I'm like, those are good tracks. But the rest of the album, I didn't really care for. I didn't like their first album. But this album just slapped differently. It took me to a different place. And I understand this album is a concept album. Okay. It's it's designed to tell a story. But the more history I did it, like, I they recorded it in a fucking haunted house. Mm-hmm. What are they, like a pop band? Yeah, no. My Chemical Romance. You've is, never heard of My Chemical Romance? I heard, but I don't I listen heard. to the music. <laughs> I heard. I heard. I listen. I suppose I've heard them. <laughs> but they are. But basically, what they did was they reinvented themselves for the sake of this album. They 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 called themselves the Black Parade and wrote from that mindset. It's a great album. It is. Oh I, my God. And, and, Not a fan. And it, when I say it, I did something special with it, when I was doing, when I was getting my master's degree. One of the things we had to do at the very end of, you know, to graduate was you had to basically write three 10 page papers on three very different topics. And I took the opportunity to not just write a paper about this album, the idea of concept albums and, and how they translate to the you know, stage, but I also created a project and I wrote a full script, a staged musical that incorporated all the tracks and a couple of the bonus tracks which aren't on the standard album and everything about this is gothic and like horror and just it tells a a, a story of a dying man and how like ah. so you wrote about i wrote a yeah i wrote like about the album i wrote a paper about the album and then i wrote a play 
about the album? Not just about the album, but it, it incorporates all the music and the lyrics into it. Like I mean, like like you know, Wicked or The Lion King on Broadway. Yeah. Same exact so thing. So you brought the lyric to life. Oh yeah, I brought this to life, and I connected it. Similar to what they did to Green Day's American Idiot. They made it a Broadway musical. I did the same thing with this. All right. And it, it's just one of the best albums on the planet, in my opinion. Yeah, I dope. I actually have um also like a connection to this album too because um i mean you don't you don't know but uh, or you weren't you weren't around but this room used to be a game room essentially we had a pool table and in that where the, all that shit is in the back used to be an enter- entertainment center with a tv and a radio and we had cds and dvds and shit and during i want to say like like 2007 to like 2008, I guess that was when it was erected, and that's when we had the pool table here. That's, yeah, that's about right. That album would be on a constant loop down here. Yes, all the time, and I would hang out because Anthony had Josh, Phil, Ramon. He'd have all his friends over. Joey would be in here, so you know me as the youngest one i wanted to be annoying and be around everybody and this album was just it was like the soundtrack for a long time and it really hiding in my closet it really just brings me like back to (laughs) like hanging out with anthony and josh and everyone when i was really young because you know just having fun because we that's all we did down here is just like hang out any of this and i remember the pool table it was it was you know i i definitely have a, a very strong connection to this album and it wasn't till i got older that i started listening to it on repeat and you know i learned the lyrics for myself and i just realized how just dope of how like dope of an album it really is and i mean also a little selfish not a selfish reason but another little connection i love is the fact that my mcr is actually like you ask them where they're from they say they're from newark yeah jersey you know they're from jersey um you know, it's just it's just a fantastic. I had no clue they were from Jersey. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Gerard are, Way and his brother yeah. Mikey. Yeah, they are both listed like you like even on their Wikipedia page. Like you go to My Chemical Romance and where they said you know, um, where is it? Oh, origin Newark, New Jersey, United States. And it's now just that I think fantastic. about it, I have a lot of a lot like not a lot of my music taste, but I get some of my music taste from Anthony and Joey. I mean, Joey's a whole, a, like, a fucking different breed. Yeah, Joey's like but, a walking jukebox. He knows But everything. Anthony, like, Avenged Sevenfold, I like some Disturbed songs. I like My Chemical Romance. Like, a lot of it growing up, Anthony, I would go, I, I would used to, Anthony used to take me on our brother-sister dates. We used to go to the movies. Oh. Like, we were the bookends, and we would hang out. Amanda, don't, don't, don't go there, because while you were hanging by your feet in your closet, <laughs> I, well, and Joey didn't want to go with me sometimes, so I took Teresa. We used to go I'm out. Sorry, in his I little, was in his going little piece of shit things. car, and, and in his was, in his on. little blue bottle. And it bomber. only happened like three or four times. And it wasn't that was anything like serious. Before you were in a relationship, so don't give me that shit. So, and he used wow. to play all these songs wow. and Avenged Sevenfold, and I fucking and it doesn't help that like you know what's his name, Avenged Sevenfold lead singer. Oh, M Shadows. M Shadows is delicious, but that's neither here nor there. Yes. But anyway, yes, I yes. think Amanda's next. Yes. Uh, yeah, Amanda, go next, and then we got to take another little uh, plug, a uh, little commercial break. Go for it. So the other album that definitely sits to me, which I definitely play all the time, um, is the Frontiers album by Journey, where you have Separate Jeez. Ways, Send Her My Love, only uh, ask the lonely. Uh, if you really honestly look and see that everything that I listen to is all about heartbreak and sadness, because that's what I am. You're a sad, sad individual. <laughs> that's so funny. <laughs> um, definitely love this uh, album because separate. Is this way- one sad again? It's. I just said that. She yes. said. Sorry. I'm. I'm a sad individual. I mean, she is. send her my love. It's a. It's basically about a guy who can't be with a girl that he loves. <laughs> Send her wow. my love. I want to be with somebody and I can't be with them. So send send him my love. Um, Do you relate? I relate. I relate big time. Separate Ways, Worlds Apart, another great song. Obviously, if you can't get the hint of what the song means by the title, then you're weird. Ask the Lonely. <laughs> Hello, I'm lonely. So You're also taking these songs way too personally. I do take them way too personally. They speak to me. She looked at um, and these songs and said that one. I want to listen to it. They definitely speak to me. Uh, so that is a great album. 
My last album that I do want to talk about is, again, another sad, sappy album, 2015, the Adele album that came out. Oh, you're so fucking annoying. Whoa. Why am I annoying? What was that? Hello? That's a great or, song. Or 25 or whatever it was? I think it was it's 25, me. yes. So that album, obviously, 2015 was a very horrible year for me. Uh, I lost my job. I... Went on, I, I quit one job, I resigned from one job, left to go to another job that I thought I was starting my career in. After 30 days, they let me go. Uh, worst summer ever because I broke up with my ex, found out he was cheating on me anyway with a pregnant girl. Thanks, shout out to you, you're an asshole. Oh my, uh, this is not oh therapy, no. Amanda. <laughs> we have our own podcast for that, Amanda. I know. Uh, We're gonna plug that soon. <laughs> and, uh, you know, Adele's album was uh, on constant repeat and she got me through... 2015 with hello um there's so many th so many she songs can get it. she can get it. my favorite have you guys seen adele now yeah. my favorite yeah, so song far. off of that album is all i ask and it's just a beautiful beautiful fucking song and i really wish i had like the voice to sing it because i think i do a great job but i, I don't, don't even know what it's about it's hold on you gotta hold sing on. it in the bathroom makes you sound a thousand times better <laughs> you're so fucking right you know how many times yep. i've sang chasing oh Payments? you know what roy is right about you you do curse every five seconds i don't give a flying fuck shout out roy <laughs> <laughs> you know it's funny you bring that up like singing in the bathroom i yeah. think that's how the used record their very first album like it was in a bathroom. Like that's how it they should did it. be. There's something about a bathroom. I don't think it's no. maybe because it's, it's it's the tile and the acoustics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It has to be like the materials a bathroom is made out of. Yeah, yeah, definitely. But anyway, all I ask is basically just like it's how what it sounds like. It's asking for love, and one of one of the song lyrics is, "If this is my last night with you, hold me like I'm more than just a friend. Give me a oh, give girl. me shut up." Give me a memory I can use. Take Sis. me by the hand while we do what lovers do. It matters how this ends, because what if I never love again? And that really hit, because when I listened to this song for the first time, I was going Does through something. Does she have a man? No. <laughs> yes, actually. No, Adele? she got divorced. She has a son, though. Oh. Um, I was going through something, and I and and and, I, and it really hit home make the best because music. I got really sad during that whole Thank time. Thank you, Isaiah. And you should make music, Amanda. <laughs> Fuck and you. That's I don't know, but that's but Especially that's my favorite in our song. Bathroom. Off, yeah. I mean, I sound like an opera singer when I'm. But pooping. I'm telling you, my my go-to song whenever I sing something, like I was really considering auditioning for the uh, choir in in tech when I was in school, and you could pick your own audition song. And my song that I always thought that I sounded really good at singing was Chasing Pavements by Adele. It's my favorite song by her. And when I sing it in our bathroom, it slaps. <laughs> if I'm being Word. entirely honest. But yeah, so I agree with you, Amanda. So we're talking about the bathroom, right? If you're constipated oh, oh my and God. you're sitting on the toilet and you're trying your best to push, you gotta remember Lil Wayne. You gotta scream, Young Moolah, baby, what while is that pushing. Do? And it comes right out. I don't know, give you confidence while, to shit? No, while pushing, you scream, Young Moolah, baby. And the shit will flow right at your ass. I'm telling you. See, I put, who's next? See, I just put my feet up on my bathroom, my, my tub. <laughs> you put your feet my, on the My Chevrolet bath. legs. I just put them on <laughs> <laughs> my <sh> Lamborghinis. <laughs> my, I shit in the tank. I put my, my feet on the bowl and I shit in the tank. My shoebaroos. <laughs> just what don't we have a, a commercial break coming yes, up soon? Yes, we do. We have a commercial break coming up right now. Stick with us, and we'll finish this podcast up on the other side of the break. Uh, see you then. Hey everyone, it's JC3 speaking. If you want to find out more about our Is This Real podcast, follow us on Facebook at facebook.com backslash Is This Real PC or on Twitter at Is This Real PC or on Instagram at Is This Real Podcast, all one word. Or if you want to see more of our parent company, Green Hour Media, then follow us on YouTube at Green Hour Media or on Facebook at facebook.com backslash Green Arrow NJ or on Instagram at Green Hour PC or on Twitter at Green Hour PC. And we are back right here on Green Arrow Podcast. And we have one more. We're going to do one more album that just tickles us in a way 
that if my wife tickled me, I'd go, oh, I love the way she tickles me. Anyway. Teresa, give me mm. one more podcast. I'm sorry, one more Whoa. album before we wrap up. So this up. actually isn't an album. It's a song, and it reminds me of you, Isaiah. Wow. It actually, and it doesn't mean anything to our relationship, but when I hear it, I think of the first night we went out because it was you had it on constantly, and that is Championed by Nav. Uh, you had that song on. You had that whole album, Reckless, on actually album, during our the first couple months of our relationship and whenever i hear that that song you can ask amanda if it plays in the car or alexa like right. that's the song that was playing in the car when me and i said like when we went on our first date Whack. that and Whack. then Whack. that's not that's not the song but the other song is also please me by bruno mars because there was one time we were making Excuse out in the back me? seat and that oh, yeah. fucking song was on repeat on every station yeah on that time that song <laughs> all was... you heard is please me <laughs> <laughs> and it, that's... that's funny she says that because my next album is nav by nav it was like one of his first albums that kind of like blew him up so that one had a lot of his classics when he first started and nav makes his own beats so when he makes the beat he could already see himself on the track so he makes you know it's kind of like it works out for him that he makes beats and then he sings on top of them or raps and makes magic with them so nav by nav is great i enjoy it very much Amanda, well, give me one more. Uh, <laughs> uh, it's going to have to be Tory Lanez. Oh, my God. <laughs> Ew. The guy who shot Megan the Stallion in the foot? All right, Amanda's canceled. No. <laughs> no Amanda's canceled. He shot Megan the Stallion. You don't he get did. to go on anymore. Hold on, wait a second. Didn't you already give us a third one? You went Journey Frontiers, and then you went Adele. And so post- Tory Lanez is is that last year's album that came out was was amazing. No, it, is it that, got me through the pandemic. Is that the guy who sang Miami? Yes, I yeah. hate that sound. Yeah. Miami is a great song. Listen, let me tell you Miami. something. So Spotify gives you what your out what your your music is for the whole entire you know how many songs yeah, you yeah, played yeah, and all yeah, that. The wrap up. Yeah. <laughs> so Tory Lanez was the number one album I played. More than Post Malone, which is crazy. Tory Lanez was the number one album I played last year. More than anybody. Mine's mine was number ones by Selena. No, yours was he looks, mine. Okay, Tory Lanez looks I'm like... I'm talking about Apple Music, not Spotify. Oh, okay, okay. Tory Lanez looks like DMX with cancer. What? DMX miniature. <laughs> I don't know what this not. guy looks like. All I know is that he hurt Megan Thee Stallion, so I hate him forever because I adore I don't her. Know. I don't know. I don't even know who he is. She's fucking hot. The contrast is low. I don't on know. Side. I don't know like any of these head. things. <laughs> you guys don't listen to Tory Lanez? What's no. Mandy, you I do. listen to I do. good I music. I listen to Tory Lanez. Mandy, you've been canceled, so I don't want to hear anything from you. Well, she's officially canceled. I'm the only yeah. one on the so, I'm a babe in a booth. Anthony, <laughs> you have one more, Anthony? I got one more, and that's 2008's Indestructible by Disturbed. Teresa mentioned it earlier. I Disturbed? I yeah. fucking love Disturbed. I've seen them I tried, times. and I got scared, and I listened to Disturbed. Dad, then, you're li- <laughs> then you're listening to the correct way because it's- I listened to it. I clicked on one because I was listening to like heavy metal at the time like yeah. uh, after middle school and I clicked on a track on YouTube and that nigga just said ah! I was like nah that's not happening <laughs> I don't know what you listen to but there's not one single track where David Draymond screams and it was like a like crazy someone stepping it was on an album nuts. cover with all the arms coming out like it was like a it was a weird one it there was, is no album cover with a bunch of arms. Are you sir, are you sure it was disturbed? It's a metal band, right? Down with the yeah, down with the sickness has the uh, wow. Yes, that's <laughs> whoa. <laughs> down with the sickness has the close up of an inmate's face with his eye looking out, and he's in his, in his thing. Um, uh, Believe is an album with their band oh, logo. Maybe it was just art, like somebody did fan art. Yeah, or some it can't shit. be. Well, let me be like, if you want to listen to Disturbed, <laughs> I can hook you up with their best stuff what tracks. Did you say? But there's no way that Money did fan art. Yeah, no, no one what did that. Is, what did the guy say when you listen to the song? Do not scream in the mic. That shit was so funny. It was it came out like really aggressive and I was like, whoa. Yeah, yeah I've, no, I've no. never I've never really listened to uh Disturbed either, but I do know that their cover of Sound of si- Sound of Silence. The Sound of Silence. Yeah. Yes. That was really fucking good. Yes. David Draymond is a very good singer. They're incredible. Uh, this in, like I obviously like down the sickness. Down the Sickness was a massive hit, and that was off their very first album, and that's what kind of put them on the map. Believe was a great album, too. Prayer was on that album. But, like, for me, what made me sit there and go, okay, now I'm a fan of this band, 
now I'm like diehard fan of this band is when they did uh, Indestructible, and their song, the hit, the first single was Inside the Fire, which is all about fighting like that personal demon of like when you've lost everything and you have nothing else to live for do you keep pushing on or do you give in to that demon and you off yourself and like it's like even the video it begins the with hell it begins with a disclaimer like if you know anyone who has committed suicide or i'm sorry if you know anyone who might you commit can't obviously suicide, get their opinion no if you know anyone who's committed suicide please call us and let us <laughs> Give know us <laughs> no, if you know someone who might be or you yourself are considering it please seek help right and it's been, the song comes out of a place where david draymond Unfortunately, he found his, one of his ex-girlfriends. He She had hung herself, and he found her body. Oof. So it played with his emotion of, like, do I join her? And, like, yeah. the whole concept of Inside the Fire is, like, a man arguing with that demon on his shoulder of, like, do it. Do it, pussy. Like, join her inside the fire. That's crazy. Versus, like, no, I got to push on because I can't kill myself because someone else decided to do that. Right? Yeah, yeah. And, of course, if you are listening out there and you're considering suicide, don't. Seek help. That is the right thing to do. But perfect insanity, insanity, divide, indestructible. I mean, these are all massive mega hits off of this. But my, first, my personal favorite is a tie between the songs Haunted and The Night. And I've seen them four, three or four times, and I have literally every every fucking release they've ever done. I'm a disturbed mega fan. And also, they did Midlife Crisis, which is a Faith No More cover on this album. Like, they try to do like a cover of a song per one, like try to do it once per album. They did Midlife Crisis. They did Sound of Silence. They did. I still haven't found what I'm looking for. We talked about that last week on our special St. Patty's Day episode. So, massive mega fan of Disturbed. Okay. Well, I think we've had a very fun podcast. We've talked about the albums that shaped us, the songs that made us who we are. I think we did an excellent job tonight. And I hope that if you're out there and you uh, are listening to us and you heard one of these albums, great. Thank you, Amanda. If you didn't hear one of the albums and they you know, piqued your interest and you're listening to them now, well, not now because you're listening to me, but like after me, that's great. Do that. Listen to music. Music is like, you know, it, it's a magical thing. That exists on our planet. Like, if we decorate the walls with art, we decorate the air with music. And I'm going to leave it up there. That's Lisa. so beautiful. Yes, it is. I'm a beautiful. So cute. I'm a beautiful person. I don't think that don't was yours, but. <laughs> it wasn't mine. So, uh, Teresa, thank you. I, I, Izzy, thank you. Yes, sir. Amanda, uh, bitch, thank you. Do I not suck. click that button. I'm not done yet. <laughs> we are, uh, we have some news and uh I'm not going to, I'm just giving you, hey, something's happening in a couple of weeks with the Green Arrow podcast. Keep it here. We have a new show coming out called Babes in a Booth starring Teresa Beans and Amanda Bitch. I don't think they're going to call themselves that on Babes in a Booth. But. I hope not. Well, I'm going to stick with Beans. I don't know if she wants to stay with Bitch. I mean, it kind of fits. It Big really boobies. does. I'm not calling Boobs. you that. Okay. <laughs> All right, Beak. everybody. Thank you. Beak. Beak yeah. and boobs. That's right. Beaks. You man Beak knows. and beans. You know, it's a shame that we're not like putting any. I mean, we can put pictures up on our Instagram and Twitter. Like, a man has a huge nose. Oh, you know what? Anyway, with Burrito that being said, this nose. has been a lovely episode, Whatever. ladies and gentlemen. I thank you for all of our listeners. Thank you guys for joining, uh, uh, you know, for being here. Thank you for everyone out there in podcast land. We will see you next time right here on Green Arrow Podcast. Bitches, this is Teresa speaking. If you want to find out more about Green Arrow Podcast, follow us on Facebook at facebook.com slash Green Arrow NJ or on Instagram at Green Arrow PC, all one word, or on Twitter at Green Arrow PC. Or if you want to see more of our Is This Real podcast, then follow us on Facebook at facebook.com slash Is This Real PC, on Twitter at Is This Real PC, on Instagram at Is This Real Podcast.